Hello, in this video I am going to do a graphical look at the income and substitution effect of a price change. Uh, we start here where the consumer is maximizing utility at point A. You've got this budget line that runs from a uh, y-axis here of 40 units to an x-axis here of 20 units. And the indifference curve is just tangent right here at uh, point A where the consumer is buying 20 units of good y and 10 units of good x. Uh, there is a price change. In this case, we're looking at a decrease in the price of good X. A decrease in the price of good X will pivot the budget constraint outwards, expanding the consumer's choice set. And in this case, the consumer ends up at point C. <clears throat> uh, this is at a higher level of utility. The consumer is on a higher indifference curve at point C. And at point C, the consumer is purchasing 24 units of good Y and 20 units of good X. So this movement from A to C is the total effect of a price change. Um, so in this case, the total effect of a price change here on good X, the price of good X falling, is a consumer buys 10 more units, just 20 minus 10. What we also want to find is the substitution effect and the income effect. So the income and substitution effect, when added together, will equal this total effect. So how do we do that? So the first thing we're going to do here is get the income effect. So I'm drawing another budget constraint that is uh, that lies right over the original budget constraint, and then I'm just doing a parallel shift out. So what we're doing here is we're going to isolate the income effect. So you take your original budget constraint, okay, and we're going to just do a parallel shift out until it is tangent to our new indifference curve. And this will isolate the income effect. So this movement then from A to B represents the income effect. So when we lower the price of a good, it is going to increase real income or purchasing power, uh, allowing the consumer to buy more goods. And so basically holding prices constant. And that's what we're doing here when we're keeping the slope of the budget line unchanged. As we just do a parallel shift out, we are holding the prices constant and just seeing the effect of an increase in real income. And that is going to be this movement from A to B. So the real income effect here, or the income effect here of the price change is that it allows the consumer to buy five more units of the good, going from 10 to 15. Now let's get this substitution effect of the price change, and that's going to be pretty easy. The substitution effect will be identified as this movement from B to C. And in this case, uh, the size of the substitution effect is five units. We go from 15 to 20. So overall, the total effect is 10 units. Five of that, in this case, is the income effect. And the other five is a substitution effect. It doesn't have to be 50-50. It just turned out the way uh, that way in this particular example. So let me speak a little bit more about the substitution effect. Graphically, what we're doing here is we're holding utility or real income constant, and we're trying to find the effect of the price change on consumption here, in this case on the consumption of good X. So we're just moving along this uh, indifference curve, so it's as if we're keeping real income constant. What is the effect of the price change? Uh, here, the slope of the budget line going from this black line to this blue line is changing, and it's flattening out, indicating that the price of good X is falling. So when the price of good X falls, holding real income or utility constant, this consumer buys five more units of good X. So that is it. I hope you found this video helpful.